Welcome back to my channel and for those of you that are new, my name is Marissa, also known as Homemaking with Marissa. Today's video is going to be showing how I make the perfect sourdough pizza crust. Now, for all of you sourdough purists, this might be <laughs> a little bit of an upsetting recipe. I am going to use sourdough discard as well as yeast. If you have been following along for a while, you know that we make pizza every single Friday night. We make the crust from scratch, we make the sauce from scratch, and then put a variety of different toppings based on family preferences. I have tested recipes with just yeast. I've tested recipes with just sourdough discard, and I find that the best result and the best flavor is a combination of both. So I'm going to be using not only sourdough discard and allowing it to ferment for those fermentation benefits, but I am also going to be using yeast so that you get that fluffy, pillowy crust that yeast dough creates. I also want to say that I am going to be using a variety of different tools. I will share the specific equipment that I use, but it's not necessary. You can use whatever is available to you in your kitchen. I, I'm going to be using a bread machine, but if you don't have a bread machine, you can use a stand mixer or you can just mix the dough by hand. You do not have to use a bread machine, though I do think that a bread machine is worthwhile and have used it for countless other recipes. The second piece of equipment that I am going to be utilizing is a specific bowl that I use to allow our crust to rise. We're going to start with the pan that I use inside of my bread machine. I will be putting all of the wet ingredients in first, followed by the dry ingredients. This is my sourdough start. I have not fed this because we're using yeast in addition to sourdough. I have found that it's not necessary to feed the sourdough. I just pulled this straight out of the refrigerator and we'll put it directly into the bread pan. I like to add two cups of the sourdough discard, which is going to pretty much deplete what I have in here. So I'll need to definitely feed it once I'm finished. I'm not worried about the hydration level of the sourdough discard, though I always feed mine a one-to-one -one ratio of flour and water. Okay, two cups, oh, two cups of discard. Next, we're going to add our, oh, looks like I'm kind of cutting off my head here. Next, we're gonna add our water. I am using three quarters of a cup of water. This is the key. If you add too much water, your dough will be too moist, too hard to work with. It is better for pizza dough to come out on the drier side than to have too much moisture. Three quarters cup water. Next. I'm going to add olive oil, one tablespoon of olive oil. I always do the olive oil first, followed by our honey. It's just the oil lubricates the inside of the measuring spoon and makes it easier for the honey to just slide straight out. One tablespoon of honey. You do not have to use honey. You can use regular sugar, granulated sugar for this as well. Now we have all of our wet ingredients in the bottom of the container here, and we're going to move on to our dry ingredients. I do keep my flour in this gigantic food safe container. I'm using just standard all purpose flour. You could use bread flour if you wanted, but I only keep all-purpose flour in the house on a regular basis and have not noticed much of a difference versus using bread flour and all-purpose flour. 
I'm going to scoop in four and a half cups of flour. Next, I'm going to add salt. I'm just using regular table salt here. I think that this is, it's whatever the sea salt is that comes from Costco, but any salt will do. One teaspoon of salt. And then this is the key. I know that a lot of people want to either do yeast dough or sourdough, but I find by adding yeast to sourdough and letting it ferment, you really do get the best of both worlds. Three teaspoons of yeast is going to go onto the top. It's important to make sure that your yeast stays separated from your liquid. When I filmed my original pizza crust recipe without sourdough, I didn't differentiate that. And while it does get mixed up pretty quickly in the bread machine, this is a standard recommendation. So I've just converted to doing it that way. You can see it's pretty full here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this into our bread machine and stick it on the bread dough setting. This will take about an hour and a half for this dough to come together. I purchased this bread machine off of Amazon and I will put it in the description box down below. I'm going to stick it on leaven dough setting, which will turn the bread machine on for about an hour and a half and it will go through several processes of kneading the dough. While our bread machine is going, I am going to show you the next piece of equipment that I use. I have this bowl that I purchased off of Amazon. It will be linked in the description box down below, but again, not necessary. This attaches to my KitchenAid stand mixer. It comes with this lid and it's a ceramic bowl. The benefit of this is if you are baking sourdough in a Dutch oven, I only have one Dutch oven, but sometimes I want to have two loaves of bread going. This bowl can be inverted and used like a Dutch oven. So you can create that steam in the oven for the first 20 minutes of baking, and then you remove the lid. The, the dough will just be sitting here, and then you can finish baking it to create that crust for the rest of the baking process. Anyway, enough on this bowl. Oh, final thing that I like about this bowl is that it is coated, so difficult to see, but the dough doesn't stick to this. You don't have to oil the bowl. If you don't have this specific piece of equipment, just use a regular mixing bowl and coat it in oil, top it with some plastic wrap or a wet tea towel to avoid a crust from forming on the top of your dough. Here is what our crust looks like after it has gone through the full cycle in the bread machine. You can see it does look a little bit dry. It's a little bit shaggy of a dough. So we're just going to pull it out of the pan. I just consolidate it, mush it into a bowl here. You can knead it a couple of times on the counter if you'd like. And once I've got it formed into a ball, you can see that there's kind of some dry bits that are coming off. All of that's gonna be fine. It's going to turn out just fine. This is the consistency that you're looking for. I am going to stick it into my bowl. Again, you don't have to grease this specific bowl, but if you're using a standard mixing bowl, you will wanna grease it first. We're just going to pop it in put our lid on and allow it to do its first rise. Once we have transferred our dough to the bowl, we are going to allow it to rise twice. We will allow it to have its first rise, punch it down, and then I like to flip the crust over, allow it to rise again, punch it down, flip it over again, and then before I go to bed that evening, I will store the pizza crust inside of the refrigerator with the lid on, this prevents it from overrising by being in a warm climate. It kind of allows the dough to go, not dormant, but it slows down the rise process. It will allow the dough to continue to ferment. I ideally will let the dough ferment for at least 36 hours. I have allowed it to ferment longer than that. And then I have also made it right away. So I've taken it directly out of the bread machine. We've rolled it out though you're not getting any of the benefits of fermented dough at that point. But if you're in a hurry, it is possible to just take it immediately out of the bread machine, roll it out, 
without allowing the extra rises and without allowing the fermentation and you can make your pizza straight away. Once we have done the punching down, we stored it in the refrigerator overnight. We're gonna wait until it's time to prepare our pizza. Ordinarily, I start this process on Thursday morning for Friday night pizza night. We will pull the bowl out of the refrigerator and my husband will divide it into two different crusts, roll it out, and then assemble our pizza. I know that this is not a traditional sourdough pizza crust or a yeast pizza crust. In my opinion, this is the perfect blending of both and creates the perfect texture of pizza crust. I also appreciate having the flavor and the fermentation benefits of sourdough. If you would like to see the video that I filmed sharing my recipe prior to having a sourdough start where I just made crust with yeast, the recipe does vary slightly. You can access that video by clicking on this annotation right here. It will take you directly to that recipe. I hope you are all doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.